The Concept of Economics in Islam Economic progress is desirable for humans, and in Islam, the earning of a halal livelihood is a religious requirement. However, economic progress should not be the goal or objective of Muslims. In Islam, economic activity is a means to an end, and not an end in itself. This difference in purpose is fundamental and is the basis for all other differences between Islamic and Western views on economic affairs. Sharia in all spheres is built with the goal of promoting a community feeling and cooperation among all members of society. Why economics is important in Islam Let us understand the importance of economics with the help of the following hadith, which defines the five basic queries that will be made to every being on the Day of Judgment. The son of Adam will not pass away from Allah until he is asked about five things, how he lived his life and how he utilized his youth, with what means did he earn his wealth, how did he spend his wealth, and what did he do with his knowledge. One may notice that two out of five of these queries are about the wealth, that is, what means did he earn his wealth, and how did he spend his wealth? So, every earning must come from halal means and must be spent on halal categories of expenditure. Islamic Economic Order in the Quran The Quran has not written out a special chapter under the heading Economic Order, because it's a universal philosophy and all comprehensive revolution. The Quran is interested not only in humans' economic life, but also gives guidance in all spheres and subjects of life, including the spiritual, the ethical, as well as the political. For example, in chapter 8, verse 62 of the Quran, Allah says, <laughs> But if they intend to deceive you, then sufficient for you is Allah. It is He who supported you with His help and with the believers. Principles of a Good Economic System An economic system is necessary for humans, and here are the four principles of a good economic system. Number one, it must suffice for every individual of the society. Number two, it must destroy all such cases and means that lead to corruption. Number three, it must discourage concentration of wealth in the hands of an individual or a group. And number four, it must bring a proper balance between capital and labor. What makes an economic order good or bad? If an economic order is good or corrupt, it depends on whether the incentive and objectives are good or not. If the mind working behind it and incentives are corrupt, the order will be proportionately corrupt, or vice versa. For example, in capitalism, only the rich get richer, while the rest of humanity remains in the squalor of poverty and misery. However, the objective and incentive of a good economic order should not be profit-making, but the complete satisfaction of human needs. Key Features of an Islamic Economic Order Islamic economic order has the following key features. It satisfies the human needs of the individual and society. There are the largest possible number of earners who are encouraged to spend, and it includes all the good aspects of other economic systems. Islamic Economic Order in the Light of the Quran According to the Holy Quran, the principles of economics cover equality and the impermissibility of hoarding and accumulation. Allah didn't make humans equal in grades of economic subsistence, and such differences are also described in chapter 6 verse 165 of the Quran as
لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ فِي مَا آتَاكُمْ He, it is who who has made you inheritors of one another, and place some of you above others, so that he may try you in respect of what he has given you. True Spirit of an Islamic Economic System The question that now arises is who to carry out the great mandate of the Almighty Allah and be made responsible for it. The true spirit of the Islamic economic order may be understood from the following Hadith Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who said, He who has weapons and tools more than his needs and strength should give them to the weak, and he who has food and nourishments above his needs should give them to the pauper and the needy. Impermissibility of hoarding and accumulation in Islam Paying zakath, giving in charity, and spending in Allah's path have been commanded by Allah. The wealth on which zakath is not given falls in the category of accumulation and merits the promised punishment. Chapter 59 verse 7 of the Quran says, <laughs> Allah has commanded that you spend on the beggars and the needy and the orphans and the relatives in order that the wealth may not become concentrated among the wealthy. Rights of the poor in Islam According to Ibn i Hazm Zahiri, it is the duty of the rich of every habitation that they look after the economic needs of the poor and needy. They should arrange at least their daily bread, clothing according to the season, and a house to shelter them from the elements of the weather and floods. <laughs> 